صلوا على محمد وآل محمد. عليكم السلام. أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم. بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم. ويل للمطففين الذين إذا اكتالوا على الناس يستوفون. فإذا كانوهم أو وزنوهم يخسرون ألا يظن أولئك أنهم مبعوثون ليوم عظيم يوم يقوم الناس لرب العالمين كلا إن كتاب الفجار لفي سجين وما أدراك ما سجين كتاب مرقوم ويل يومئذ للمكذبين الذين يكذبون بيوم الدين وما يكذب به إلا كل معتد أثيم إذا تدلى عليه آياتنا قال ساقير الأولين كلا كلا بل ران على قلوبهم ما كانوا يكسرون كلا إن إنهم عن ربهم يومئذ لمحجوبون ثم إنهم لصالوا الجحيم ثم يقال هذا الذي كنتم به تكذبون كلا إن كتاب الأبرار لفي عليين Woe to the defrauders, who when they take a measure of their dues from men, take it fully. But when they measure out to others or weigh out for them, they are deficient. Do not these think that they shall be raised again for a mighty day, the day on which men shall stand before the Lord of the worlds? Nay, most surely the record of the wicked is in the Sijin. And what will you make what will you what will make you know what the Sijin is? It is a written book. Woe on the day to the rejectors, who give the lie to the day of judgment. And none gives the lie to it but every exceeder of limits, sinful one. When our communications are recited to him, he says stories of those of your. Nay, Rather, what they used to do has become like rust upon their hearts. Nay, most surely they shall on, the day, on that day be debarred from their Lord. Then most surely they shall enter the burning fire. Then shall it be said, this is what you gave, to the, gave the lie to. Nay, most surely the record of the righteous shall be in the... Iliyan? Iliyan. Iliyan. Yeah, thank you for the translation. Um, so, we're doing Surah Al-Mutafafin for um, everyone who's joining us fresh again. Uh, last week, what we did was the first part of the Surah plus a little bit of the second. The Surah, uh, surah Al-Mutafafin is, is divided into various parts. First of all, we talked about uh, the beginning, which was about Wailun Al-Mutafafin. We described the word whale, which was very significant. Uh, any, anyone remember what it was, how, how significant it was? Whoa, well, too. Yes, that's right. Um, and then we went a little bit further even, and we talked about it being adab and halak, which is a major torture or perdition. Uh, we looked at the definition of um, what perdition is. Then we looked at uh, al mutafifin uh, which, which are those that uh, lessen the Mikiyat and the Mizan, and we talked about each of those as well. Okay, 
Um, in other areas of the Quran, it talks about al mutaffifin and what they did, what they do, and gives us a warning about it. So we talked about that last week. Um, we talked uh, all about the justice, and we gave each other examples about uh, what it could mean to our daily lives as well. Okay. I just want to go back a little bit to the to these ayahs. I was going to do this at the end, but I, I just want to make emphasis that when we're reading the surah, when it says "waylun lil mutaffifin," does it specify whether we're talking about mu'minin or kafirin or munafiqin? Anyone, right? So it could be a Muslim, it could be a Christian, it could be a Jew, it could be a Munafiq, it could be a Kafir. Any of those people that do, uh, uh, that do uh, give imbalance of the scale, waylun alayhum. It could be anyone. So that doesn't exclude us. Uh, it doesn't say of what religion or what belief. It doesn't say there whether we're talking about kuffar or munafiqin. Um, don't they doubt? Do they not think that they will be called to account? It doesn't say whether we're talking about Muslims or non-Muslims. And a day when all mankind will stand before the Lord of the, uh, of the worlds. Whether you're mu'min or non-mu'min, whether you're kafir or uh, a believer, it doesn't matter. There is that day of judgment, and it applies to all of us. So there's no um, indication or no reason why we should not think that this surah applies to us in our daily life. Um, we talked about Sajim, uh, which is, could be uh, described as a prisoner, and how our a'mal are being recorded and are being held prisoner in this kitab, and there's no escape. Uh, it could also uh, be describing where this book is held, which is in the seventh depth of the earth. Or, um, and there's, there's multiple re uh, um, explanations of the sijin, but the root word is from prison, prisoner. So now we're up to this, uh, which we've read already. Thank you, Hajkari. And now we'll just quickly go into the translation, and you can see I've highlighted one particular ayah, and I'll explain to you why. So, woe that day to those that deny, those that deny the day of judgment, and none can deny it but the transgressor beyond bounds the sinner. And I'll concentrate on those if illa kullu mu'tadin, afim, mu'tad and afim are the two words that I'd like to concentrate on. When our signs are rehearsed to him, he says tales of the ancients, by no means, but on their hearts is the stain of the ill which they, can do, which they do. We'll go through the rest of the translation a little bit later. So this book of the Fujjar, now we're talking specifically about people that sin on a continuous basis. But Fujjar is not just talking about Mutafifin, right? The surah is about Al-Mutafifin, صح? Yeah. Yes. <laughs> it's being recorded, so it's, it's okay, you can still... <laughs> I think it would be good to uh, define, uh, to explain the word Fujjar, Fajr. Okay, Fujjar. Uh, root, root word, Fajr? Fajr, yeah. Which is... Fajr. Explosion, exactly. Yes. Like when the, when the ocean sort of explode or boil over. Basically, you've got, let's, let's just imagine um, a, uh, I can't remember the name of it, but there's a particular um, uh, type of bubble that's created from glass. I'll, I'll, need, I'll come back to you with the name, inshallah, one day. But uh, if I find it, if, if you, the glass, when you form, when you make it, it, you need to make it hot, right? In, in, in order to shape it, you need to heat it up to a, a, a boiling point, so it becomes liquid. Now, if you super heat, super cool the surface, the surface becomes very cold and solidifies, right? It's a drop. It becomes a drop. But inside hasn't yet cooled yet. It's still liquid, right? It's still liquid, and heat expands. Is that correct? 
Now, if heat expands, what, what that means, and the, and the cold glass contracts, what that means is the surface is small, but inside it's still expanded. But when the inside, the glass inside cools, it also contracts. So there's now an imbalance. It's not just a drop of glass. There's a drop of glass that's full of energy. Okay? Now, if that glass drops, or if you poke it, what happens is if the glass doesn't just break like normal glass, a ball through a window. You throw the ball through the window, it just shatters. This thing, if you touch it specifically, or if you, if you in fact, the tail of the, of the drop, if you flick the tail of the, the drop, it explodes. That's for jar. That's like an explosion. It's like TNT, a bomb about to go off. It's called the Prince Rupert's Drop. Thank you. Prince Rupert's Drop. There you go. Um, so this... This is uh, one explanation of what Al-Fujjar is. They're exploding with sinful acts. Not necessarily a mutafifin in this case. We're talking about a mutafifin in this surah. But in the Kitab Al-Fujjar, we're talking about Fujjar people who are kuffar, who are fasiqeen, who are mutafifin, who are mukaddibin, and whatever else that we have that, that could relate to that. But uh, I think Fajr can be also a Muslim who was rejected or... Yes. Yeah, so it's not just... It, 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 but once you become a Fajr, of course, yeah. the, the whole definition of, yeah. of Muslim changes. Okay. وَمَا أَدْرَاكَ مَا سِجِينَ كِتَابَ مَرْحُمُ We've done that last, last week. وَيْلٌ يَوْمَئِذٍ لِلْمُكَذِّبِينَ Let's just ignore this for the, uh, the, the screen for a little bit. وَيْلٌ يَوْمَئِذٍ لِلْمُكَذِّبِينَ There's that word again, وَيْلٌ so we're talking about some serious stuff here. Uh, when Allah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uses this term, we need to pay attention to the next couple of um, words because these, this is what we need to avoid. وَيْلٌ يَوْمَ إِذِنْ On the day. This is the day that we are sure is going to happen. لِلْمُكَدِّبِينَ Now, going back to the beginning of the ayah, المطففين, how, do, how is it that people become... Um, of the kind that give imbalance. It starts off with little bits at a time, doesn't it? You do a crime once, it becomes easier the second time, doesn't it? You sin once, the first time is hard, the second time it's easier, the third it's very easy, the fourth it becomes second nature. So, al mukaddibin that's relating back to al mutafufin It starts from there. al ladina yukaddibuna bi yawm those who lie um, for the day. Uh, I'll just go back to uh, those that deny the day of judgment. And here's the, here's the important bit. And none can deny it but the transgressor beyond bounds the sinner. So the transgressor is crossing the lines of worship. Who is it that do mukaddibin? Who, who are these mukaddibin? وَمَا يُكَذِّبُ بِهِ إِلَّا So nobody, does, nobody lies about the Day of Judgment. Except إِلَّا كُلُّ مُعْتَدٍ أَثِيمٍ The transgressor. First let's look, look at the word مُعْتَد. The transgressor. The people who cross the line. Now let's, if, if we have rules, people that cross the rule all the time, they're called مُعْتَد. They're sinful. They're sinning. أَثِيمٍ is beyond the bounds of the sinner. Wicked. They're corrupt. Bad. Um, and it's an adjective. It's a, it's a doing thing. Uh, does that come from Warata, which is uh, addictive? No. No? No. No. Ted here, it, it's... Because he, he crosses the line. That is something like that. Preparing for... Uh, Are you asking about the root word, though? Yeah, exactly. What's the root word? When you ask me... Right, when you add mean to any other quote, it becomes the person who's doing that. Not repeat. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. Now, again, in this chapter 30, we don't describe those uh, those transgressions, but there's various places in the Quran that that give ex examples and specifically say these are uh, the the rules of Allah, the boundaries of Allah. Do not transgress. For example, Surah Al-Baqarah 187. Um, 
These are the limits by Allah. Approach not, don't even go near them. Right. Um, thus does Allah make clear His signs to men that they need, may learn self-restraint. Surah Talaq, ayah number one. وَتِلْكَ حَدُودُ اللَّهُ وَمَنْ يَتَعْ Talaq. Talaq, is that right? Talaq. وَتِلْكَ حَدُودُ اللَّهُ وَمَنْ يَتَعَدَّ حُدُودُ اللَّهُ فَقَدْ ظَلَمَ نَفْسَهُ لَا تَدْرِي لَعَلَّ اللَّهَ يُحَدِّثُ بَعْدَ ذَلِكَ أَمْرًا يُحْدِثُ يُحْدِثُ those are limits set by Allah, and any who transgresses the limits of Allah does verily wrong unto his own soul. Um, and uh, Baqarah 190 as well is another example about uh, uh, jihad. Fight in the cause of Allah those who fight you, but do not transgress limits, for Allah loves not the transgressors. <coughs> now, a theme is... Someone who keeps doing sinning to the point where there's no point of return. It's now part and parcel of your personality. It's your attributes. That's it. You, you are a theme and you just can't see beyond just doing evil. Doing good is just out of the question. It's, it's out of the realms of your normal practice. Um, as an example, uh, Arun, Ayah 10, ثم كان عاقبة الذين أساءوا السوء السوء أن كذبوا بآيات الله وكانوا بها يستهزئون. In the long run, evil in the extreme will be the end of those who do evil, for that they rejected the signs of Allah and held them to, up to ridicule. So sinning is what drives us away from worship and towards transgression. Now it doesn't. We're not saying sinning. In the major, we're not talking about greater sins even. We're talking about const constant minor sins. Constant minor sins that keep adding these black dots to our pure hearts that add up and add up and add up and eventually it takes over that white heart. And, and um, the heart becomes not telling a thing. Sorry? Um, Ayah number 13 to 14, where it says, إِذَا تُتْلَى عَلَيْهِ آيَاتُنَا قَالَ أَسَاطِيرُ الْأَوَّلِينَ So, tutla as in, we're reciting the ayat to those people, those muqtadin athim, those mukaddibin. Not only are we telling them the ayat, but the ayat are actually like, the words are following them. إِذَا تُتْلَى عَلَيْهِ آيَاتُنَا they say they are the words of the ancients. Now, if you can imagine, um, like, myths or, or ancient stories, like, uh, I don't know, give me one. Zeus. Cinderella. And what was it? Greek mythology. Greek mythology, the gods and Zeus. And, you know, you, you hear these stories, and when you grow up, Father Christmas, Easter, rather. And, you, and then you grow up, and you go, ah, oh, this is all stories of the old, right? These are all just stories that we read. Um, by the campfire. They're all what, fake. This is a problem with schools nowadays in, for example, in Australia. They go to primary school, they believe in Father Christmas, they believe in Easter, and then they go to high school and hello, all of a sudden, these are all fake. So when you go to the Bible, or when they go to the Quran, and I've been through this before, you're not going to trick me again. Father Christmas, you told me was right when I was young. You used to put the presents that used to come down the chimney, and, and the Easter rabbit used to lay eggs. And now you're telling me not, they're not true. And now you want, to, you want me to believe that there's a God, that there's a hell and fire and something that I can't see. This is the problem with, with the way that we teach children nowadays. We make them believe in these things. Then they find out, not from the parents, of course, from school, they find out that it's not true. So how are we expected to um, allow them to believe these things? Um, so this word... This means that if you recite them, these verses, they believe what? That they are simply <coughs> ancient words, they're mythology. Now he's, here we're emphasizing something. Definition of Ran, anyone? Stain? It's a stain or a rust. And why is rust so unwanted in metal? 
because it spreads. It spreads. It eats away at the metal. That's why there's so many products that prevent um, rusting. Salam alaikum. Welcome. So Iran is, is this rust or this stain, this black stain that eats away at the heart. Rana ala qulubihim what ma kanu yaksibun, what they used to earn. Right? Let's go back to the first ayah. Wailun lil mutafifin. They, mutafifin is they're earning a little bit extra more than what they actually deserve. And it's that little bit extra this is what they used to earn. Just a little bit, a cent or two more than what they deserve. A dollar or two more than they deserve. A minute or two more from work than they deserve. Right? A sikhi when they actually don't deserve it. That's, that's, al mutafifin. We're earning a little bit more than we actually justify, we, uh, uh, that we justly earn. إذا تطلع عليه آياتنا قال أساطير الأمم كلا بل ران على قلوبهم ما كانوا يكسبون كلا إنهم عن ربهم يوم إذن محجوبون. Okay, here we go. This bit here. Oh, sorry. Let me just read this um, hadith from uh, Imam Muhammad al Bakr عليه السلام about specifically about this ayah 14 about uh, ران على قلوبهم ما كانوا يكسبون. Uh, the heart of a believer is as good-natured, spotless as whiteness. But when, he's, when he sins, a stain appears on it. Uh, I think we all remember it. Oh, yeah. Those of you who were here, we drew a big white heart with one single black dot. This is what can happen to the black dot. Which disappears if he turns repentant to Allah and sins no more. And it's important to repent. And we did this subject of Tawbah. Repent immediately. Don't say, I've sinned. Therefore, I'm stuffed up. Let's just sin for the rest of the night. As soon as you realize it, as soon as you realize it, you need to stop and repent. Um, which disappears if you uh, turns repentant to Allah and sins no more. In the event of continued sinning, the stain spreads and covers the whole heart. He is lost and then no word of guidance brings him to the right path. That's from the, uh, Imam alayhi salam on ayah number 14. Now, I just want to compare as well, I 16, which, uh, uh, sorry, 15. كلا إنهم عن ربهم يوم إذن لمحجوبون Which is, those people, عن ربهم, from their Lord, يوم إذن, on the day of judgment, لمحجوبون There's a barricade between them and who? Allah, right? So there's, there's a barrier, mahjubun. There's something that's preventing them from see or, or, or approaching. Or there's a hijab bayna from anyway. There's a hijab in between them. Compare that to the ayah in um, in the previous surah, Surah Al Infitar, number sixteen, where it goes, Wa in al fujjar la fi jahim. The fujjar are la fi jahim. They're in Jahannam, in hell. يَسْلَوْنَهَا يَوْمَ الدِّينِ They're in there on, on, on the judgment day, right? وَمَا هُمْ عَنْهَا بِغَائِبِينَ And they are not, they cannot steal a glimpse away from it. So their eyes are literally focused and targeted onto the Jahim. وَمَا هُمْ عَنْهَا بِغَائِبِينَ They cannot steal, they can't even blink away from it. Okay? Compare it to Ayah 16, which is كَلَّا إِنَّهُمْ عَنْ رَبِّهِمْ يَوْمَ إِذِنْ لَمَحْجُوبُونَ They are barricaded, or there's a curtain between them and their Lord. So there's something they can't see, but there's something that they can't take their eyes away from. So it's complementing, it's complementing each other. ثُمَّ إِنَّهُمْ لَسَانْ رَجْحَيْهِمْ كَلَّا إِنَّ كِتَابَ الْأَبْرَارَ Sorry. ثم يقال هذا الذي كنتم به تكذبون. No, we've already done that. Um, so the last, the second last idea I, I we're doing today is ثم يقال هذا الذي كنتم به تكذبون. You will be told those fujar who can't turn their eyes away from hell, they will be told that this is what you earned by of what you told of what of lie or of what the lies you did. 
Um, let's go back to the translation. What, what's the actual translation? I number 15? 16? 17, sorry. 17? Yep. Then shall it be said, this is what you gave the lie to. Yeah. So the important word here is ثُمَّ يُقَالُ in, in other words, they will be told. And it doesn't specify who will tell them because uh, we know from elsewhere in the Quran that uh, God will not even address these people. So somebody else is telling them. It's not even God that's going to be addressing them. So something else is going to be telling them, this is what you used to, this is what you've earned, this is what you deserve. This is the, the, the hisab that you deserve. And I, what, I want to, what I want to touch on is the next ayah because so far we've been talking about Fujjar and Kuffar and Mutafatin and all the bad stuff. Kalla inna kitab al abrar la fi al diyin and and next session what I want to talk about is this book of al abrar, the good doers. La fi al diyin and it's in a, in a uh, a very high place. It's in the seventh heaven, and even later in the in the surah, inshallah, if I can if I can do it next week, it's really going to be the focus of this surah for us or for me anyway, in the practical aspect of our religion. Because it goes on to describe about what the kuffar do to the mu'mineen, which is they laugh at them. And if they pass them, they wink. You know, it's like, you know, these little looks that people can give each other. It's like, yeah, okay, he, here's another one, another mu'min. And they make fun of those mu'mineen. Whereas at the end of the surah, it tells us what... On the day of judgment, it's actually the mu'minin that will be doing that to the kuffar. It's like, yeah, I told you so. So it's it really the, the surah itself turns from this, all, all those things and all these um, sort of results of our actions, our negative actions, towards the results of the people who do all the positive actions. Sallallahu alayhi wa Muhammad wa ayy Muhammad. Thank you very much for listening. Any questions? Does that make any sense? It's actually uh, uh, just two comments. It's the significant, I guess, there's four inscriptions for Mutafafin. So start with Mutafafin, then uh, just I just chose the significant of the Ark, then the Fujjah, then uh, Martyr and Athim are liars. So I guess it just shows the significant of us, you know, the examples we talked about, uh, having imbalance when it comes to our daily dealings with they all link they all link they all link so they all fit each other but the significant because it started about that but then it kept uh, progressing the, the, the language becomes stronger and stronger and to get to the point they are mighty the theme and you know so we started off by earning a little bit, a little extra, bit just a little bit and that's all it takes it started off by, you know, just, you know, one cent, two cents, and then it started to become Mukaddabin, and then it's like, Mu'tadin Athim, and it's like, hang on a minute, we're, we're Fujar now. And it all started off by this, this little earning, so it's very progressive. Point. The, other, other the, other, the other thing is uh, interesting when the I switch from talking about those people to talking about the other ones, it's exactly half of the sort of... Yeah, so that's a it's a mirror. That's a mirror, so yeah, that's yeah. a balance of the... And inshallah, we'll, we'll do that next next week. No more comments? Yes? I think it's important to add as well, like, it's uh, baby steps towards getting worse, but it's also vice versa, baby steps towards getting better. Yeah. So you can't expect this major change in yourself from the side to then, the fitr to the Quran and everything in one day. You also need to have that slow progression towards becoming better. Otherwise, um, just going to fall back to what you were the next day. That depends. Generally speaking, I think he's trying to say. Yeah, generally speaking, you're right. You do need to take progressive steps. But if you were in year 12, and you knew you had a, an exam at the end of the year, right? And you bludged all year, right? And then you realize, hang on a minute. I got a test coming up in the next two weeks. What do most people do in the last two weeks just before their exams? Cram. They cram, right. Now, the, the only problem that we have is that we don't know when that test is going to come. It's going to come, right? We know it's going to come. 
يَوْمَ يَقُومُ النَّاسُ لِرَبِّ الْعَالَمِ That day is great and it's coming, there's no doubt about it. The problem is what? We don't know when the test paper is going to be handed to us. Now, taken away from us. Or, or taken away from us, that's right, because we can't write. Um, now, if we can make that realization quicker, it's better. But you're right, it does take time for us to, to make that realization. It's just... How quickly can we realize? So, I, well, I agree with you, it's... But what uh, uh, Rahim is trying to say is, generally speaking as well, those people that end up cramming usually fail. That's but right. if you are... Well, yeah, yes. ...consistently... Improving. ...towards getting, you know, um, you know, each chapter you do it progressively, rather than doing all the chapters in one night, which is, most cases, impossible. Yes. Then... Then you'll you know, start. I guess I just... I'd, Comment to that is persistence, so we keep trying. For example, in the dark years, so I used to focus on pray and then maybe don't pray and pray. So, and everybody telling me this is the worst sense, and I'm telling myself I need to keep trying because one day I will continue. Because people are telling you if you do that, this is the biggest sin and it's worse than kafir and all that. But I, I need to keep trying because one day hopefully I'll, you know, I'll continue. Alhamdulillah, you get to that point. So I guess the point is we keep trying to improve. <coughs> With your permission, can I add a word? Of course, please. That uh, probably you have asked that the path to salvation or the truth is progressive. It should be progressive. Quran has given many examples in which there is no such progression. And the best example is those of the Sahiran and Musa al -Islam. Okay. Those magicians, mm. when mm. they come to confront the Musa al -Salam, and you look at the verses of Quran, at that time they were asking the Pharaoh, the Quran, that if we are successful, will we get some reward? And he said, yes, you will be, I mean, al -Muqarrabi. you will be within my close ones. Mm. And within such a short span of time, when they see the miracle of Hazrat Musa al -Salam, and the words of Quran, sujada. And sajda is the last stage of worship. If you consider it uh, really, not the sajda formal, but the real sajda, mm -hmm. it is the last stage of worship. And the word as uh, narrated in Surah Taha, they say that, Wallahu khayrun wa abqa. If you can understand its profoundness, it's so great. They are not saying that this, the Naimat e Khuda, Wallahu They have reached that station that they are seeing Allah as their main earning. So it is not, not necessary. And another thing which I want to add is that this you have to decide that this cycle of life in which we are moving is it sin versus repentance or knowledge versus ignorance you have to decide normally we follow the path of sin versus repentance we continue to perform sins and we are afraid that we will go to fire and hell and all this and repent. no if you uh, go back to the verse Surah Baqarah, from where the story of humanity is started, Hazrat Adam, that started with Elm. Mm. Mm. So the problem of humanity is to know, to get the right knowledge, to come out of their ignorance. And that's what happened with those magicians. That as soon as they gained the proper knowledge, because they were knowledgeable in their own fields, and when they see the stick of Hazrat Musa to eat up all those serpents, so they come to know that this cannot be made. That's it. And that's knowledge. And that's it. There's no question. And as soon as the light of knowledge dawns upon your heart, you are it. That's it. So it is not necessary that the path of progress is like this, this, this. That is for those who follow this path, sin versus repentance, going back, forth, back, forth. Mm. And that is what is the meaning of uh, in the first khutbah of Nahjul Balagha, Awwaluddin Ma'arifatullah. But so, a question about that, I mean, even knowledge, I guess, 
we're always learning and we're always supposed to increase our maturity in religion or in other aspects. So I guess just the view I want to put there, even knowledge to some extent, the more you know, the more you read books, the more your faith becomes stronger and the more you do. No, it is not that knowledge which is important. That's why I have <coughs> recited to this word of Imam Ali alayhi salam, awwalu deen ma'arifatullahi, awwalu deen ma'arifatuhu. Ma'arifat means correctly understanding something, comprehending something correct. But that won't come suddenly, or hmm? Hmm? that won't come suddenly, or comes impactfully. It, it, it may come, no. It may come, exactly. I have, I have given come. you the example. Yeah, but the uh, thing with Sahara hmm. is an exception of the normal thing. If, if, if in Quran, if in Quran, Sorry. all yeah. the things... It was incremental. Because he was back and forth, back yeah, and forth, until he decided. For that's what I'm saying. The knowledge is not an impact in once, and you decide. Actually, it's a progression, you know. but in a different pace of time. Knowledge, if you are considering knowledge like this, that we are giving lectures, we are listening to something, grabbing some points, losing some points, this is exactly not knowledge. For example, the ilm. The definition of ilm, as pronounced by Imam Sadiq is al-ilm nurun. Ilm is a light, mm -hmm. and the heart which Allah sees as it's uh, in the mustahiq, He puts that light in that heart. So it is not that. Like Ayatollah Jawadi Amli says, that all we do in our schools and in our institution, that is tadris. Not ta'aleem. You teach lessons. So it, it is marifat. It is marifat. If, if that marifat dawns on you, you will take a millisecond or a microsecond to reach from here. What about uh, Hadith al You take steps to God, God take 10 steps toward you. So I guess. I, I know I another, know, what another you, example, I know what you're saying. But I another guess, example is that of four. Sorry? Another mm -hmm. example is that of four. If you are prepared, then a spark is sufficient to elevate you. But even with heart, he had stages within a limited space of time. You were very right when you said that generally speaking. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. But that is not a rule. Yeah, you're right. What, I, I what I'm saying is, generally speaking, because people are entrapped in materialism, mm -hmm. because the minds right. of people are chained in the fetters of materialism, yep. they are not free. So that's why it happens to them. I think as well, if you... If Otherwise, you, it is not a rule. I'm only trying to say that it is not a rule. Yeah, you're right. Uh, I agree with you mm -hmm. completely, especially when you look at um, uh, you and Islam, sort of, uh, and how to talk to them. Where it says, mm -hmm. where it's, when they see that fire, it's that certainty in, in that knowledge. They may know that there is a fire, but there's no certainty in it. And once they see the fire, there's that certainty in that knowledge, and then they will come to realize. Well, I guess we're discussing, uh, like those are great examples that, like you see there on the Quran, or the Imam Hussain, they're just... Uh, no, no, the Quran gave the example, Sahir, Sahiran. There were no great people, there were no people of faith. Mm. If I can give an example of, of, of this particular kind of ma'arifat, that indicates how faith is is unpredictable, really, at the end of the day. We, we have this consciousness of faith that is gradual and it builds up. But um, there was a very interesting um, lecture by Yaman Ali Khan regarding um, stone and how stone is referred to in, I think, Surah Al-Baqarah in relation to belief and how it is um, used as, as a metaphor for belief. So, you know, it, it, is, it is even more. And then it explains that it's some kinds of stones... So the heart is like a stone, exactly if not, right. so there if are not really harder. different stones, uh, some that, you know, burst water out of them. And, and, and he explains that you'll have these people who, um, in life, they just, you know, go along and are really oblivious to what's around them. And suddenly something happens to them that's quite profound. Like, for example, the Sahara with Musa. Something profound happens. It challenges their own 
ability in, in, in that um, uh, ritual that they were doing, that they saw that this is the truth, and completely overhauled their whole faith system. And so then you have the water gushing out, which is basically the heart and the mm. faith, the purity of the faith gushing out. So I think um, the concept of it's never too late is really important, but also the concept of marifa, which was just mentioned now, which is once you know, this is where you can, can be categorized as fajr, this is when you can be categorized as kafir. If you looked at the Sahara prior to that point, you, you wouldn't know what, what, whether they actually knew or not, because obviously once they knew, they had faith. Once they had the, the understanding and comprehension of God, they mm. had that faith. So it's, it's a very sort of different perspective for each different one. Is, well, if the Sahara had known, but continued to be defiant, and, yeah, and continued to be with Pharaoh and, and, and exercised a reluctance to um, embrace faith, that's when your definitions come into play. You know, of Fujar, of and so on. Yeah. Um, do you wanna, uh, we'll just have a quick break. Um, I think the tea is ready, is that right? Do you want to have it, yeah?
So now there are a few questions. Although this verse seemed to be quite simple, but there are a few questions which I highlight next. That first thing is that fasting and abstaining, what is fasting? You abstain yourself, you refrain yourself from some activities from the dawn to dusk. That is actually taqwa. In, in, in Rosa, you are not doing anything. You are only refraining yourself from certain activities. And the Quran is not saying, the verse is not saying that fasting is due to taqwa. But it is saying that taqwa is the net outcome of fasting. It is not taqwa that is making you fast. The but it is, it is the practice of fast that is making you muttaqi. Yeah, but it's not net outcome. It might be leading to you. It, it is, I, I, I don't think that we should go into this because okay. the, it is very simple. It is very simple. Because the, there are many people who are only have the face of Rosa and unless and until you do not observe Rosa with its true spirit, you cannot achieve taqwa. <clears throat> in fasting, now the most interesting point. In fasting, during Rosa, a person is abstaining from haram activities or halal activities? Haram. 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 Mainly halal. Mainly, Mainly halal. halal. Yeah, but haram as well. Mainly halal. So if if taqwa if taqwa is abstaining from haram, if taqwa is abstaining from haram, how keeping oneself away from halal activities is making one muttaqi? This is a very interesting question. Understanding it? If you say that move away from haram, do not do this, refrain from this, you will become muttaqi. This verse is saying that the net outcome, the net ghayat, the net purpose of incumbing, uh, uh, having fast incumbent on you is that you become muttaqi. And in that practice, you are refraining from halal activities. So it means that there must be some correction in that definition. That taqwa is moving away from haram. Because if taqwa is moving away from haram only, then why keeping yourself away from halal is making a muttaqi? Second question. Third is a bit philosophical. That's if one says, if one insists, that no, it is taqwa that makes you to fast. Philosophically, something which is the initiator cannot be the goal, except Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The only exception is Allah. He is the beginning and he is the end, except Allah. In this world of creation, if something is an initiator, it cannot be the goal. If fasting is due to taqwa, then taqwa cannot be the end result. And you can see in a natural example that you put a seed in the soil, in the sand, it grows into a tree, you have a fruit, fruit again fetches you the seed. But seed and fruit are not the same. Seed and fruit are not the same thing. Although you again obtain seed from that fruit. So something which initiates is not the goal. So now we are forced and this is the learning curve of Quran. So what is taqwa? Yes, yes, <laughs> yes, yes. So this is how, this is how Quran pinches us. If we try to go into the depths, if we do not fall, uh, uh, intend to follow our own assumptions and stick because the most important point in comprehending the truth is clean your mind and your heart 
from any pre-assumptions. With a clean heart, go towards Quran and it will enlighten you. With something that you have never thought before. So, in fasting, in fasting, what is the main thing? In fasting, if you have the opportunity to go into a room where no one else is observing you and there is heat, for example, in Iraq and Iran and in Pakistan, when, the rose, when fast came in the months of June and July, then people know what happens in those when mercury is at 45. So if you see a glass of cold water in front of you, what is actually refraining you from drinking that water? What is it? Your concept, your feeling to any degree that someone is looking at me. Someone is observing me. So having this feeling in your heart, cultivating this feeling, that in whichever situation I am and in whichever condition I live, I am before the eyes of my Lord. That quality is taqwa. Just being aware. Being aware constantly of God. Yes. This feeling, this feeling that Allah is my Lord is looking at me everywhere, every place. So what fasting enforces in me? That I can go to a secluded room, I can eat in hot weather. I do not do it. That's why a lot of translations might not be accurate because when they refer to taqwa, they refer to it as yes. fearing God. Yes. Yes, it is not fearing. It is not fearing. It is cultivating this quality in your heart that I am in the eyes of Lord. I think that's why some translations actually is God conscious. Yes, yes, yes. You're conscious that God is always watching you. So and, and abstaining from haram is an outcome of taqwa. Mm, subset of it. So now you understand the true meaning. That Actually, taqwa is not abstaining from haram. Taqwa is a uh, abstaining from haram is a result of being a taqi. The, in the context of fasting, can it be abstaining from desires? Like even the halal? Every, everything. Everything. You, you in it, the, the Allah is putting us into a practice that this thing is lawful, this is not haram, but you are abstaining from it only because of me. This is the practice. So this is the practice if one is having the true marifat of Rosa, that is where La Allah is coming. If one is having true marifat of Rosa and practicing Rosa according to it, then he will gradually cultivate what? God consciousness. That wherever I am, even if no one is looking at me, my Lord is looking at me. And that's why you will always automatically abstain from unlawful things not that under a force or under any compulsion yes I'm, I'm trying to relate to what you just said from yeah. my own experience of fasting but um, I feel that um, when I'm fasting um, I stick to the past not because not even just because I'm aware that God is watching me but because I'm interested in the outcome of the process and I'm, I don't want to cheat myself, I want to reap the benefits of going through the past completely. So it's not even because I feel that God is watching me that I abstain, it's because I want to complete the past and receive the blessing where it comes from. In that way, in, in that case, because there are the limits of people, ranges of people, and as uh, uh, we see in many, uh, a single ahadith, single text from many ayma, Tahirin al salam that some people are performing ibadat and the amal as slaves, mm -hmm. some are performing as traders, and some are doing it as uh, in the love of God, mm -hmm. 
only because Allah has said to it. And there is a fourth category as well that some people live their life because Allah has chosen them to be like it. That is the a, a station which is beyond our comprehension, like the elevation of station of Masoom. Mm -hmm. It is fourth is a station of Masoom. So it all depends mm -hmm. that a, I may be a, doing a trade, trade with Allah, as most of us are doing, mm -hmm. that we are selling our ibadat and purchasing Jannat as a, in return. Mm -hmm. Or we may be so fearful of the fires of the hell that I am performing every 